Hey there, everybody. Good afternoon. It is Tuesday, April the 18th, 2023, and it is 12.05 in the afternoon. Sorry for the inconsistency in the time. We've got revival going on this week and other things going on, so everything is up in the air for me. But we're still getting it done every single day, like we always do. In fact, boy, goodness, when we have 22 minus uh, 9 after today, 11, 11 days left. No, that's not right. 30 13 days left, and uh, we'll be done with the entire Bible over three years. So praise the Lord for that. We're continuing on with the trumpet judgments. I don't know how long I'm going to keep recapping. They're getting shorter and shorter. Chapter one is the introduction of the book. Chapters two and three are seven letters to seven churches. Chapter four, John goes to heaven via the rapture, sees the throne of God. Chapter five is the scroll that no one can open except the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter six, the Lord begins to open the seals of the scroll. Chapter 7, he continues to open the seals of the scroll. And then the seventh seal actually unleashes seven more judgments. And these are the trumpet judgments, and those begin in chapter 8. And uh, the first four are listed there. Now chapter 9, we're going to see the fifth and sixth trumpet judgments. So that's where we're at. I don't know if we prayed or not. Did we pray? Uh, let's pray now. Father, help us as we read and study. Give us wisdom from the Word of God. Thank you for it. Thank you for showing us these things. Help us to learn and understand. In Christ's name, amen. All right, Revelation 9, verse number 1. And the fifth angel sounded. So this is the fifth trumpet sounding, and it's the fifth judgment. We've seen a third of the trees die, a third of the sea turn to blood, all of the grass die, a third of the fresh water supply uh, also turned to blood. And then there was another thing. I forget what that was. Oh, the sun, moon, stars are darkened by a third. So those were the first four trumpet judgments. Now the fifth. I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And we mentioned this before. John can only describe things as he knows and understands them. Maybe this is a meteorite. Maybe this is a special star that God sends in judgment. Maybe it's a missile. We just don't know because he's not going to know what a missile is, but we do. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Actually, let me adjust this now. The star that falls from heaven unto the earth, in this case, I should have read the whole verse. This is Lucifer. Lucifer is the uh, star, the chief cherub who falls from heaven. And God gives him a little bit of authority here. He gives him the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. They're already darkened by a third. Now they're further darkened. So Satan falls from heaven. He unlocks the bottomless pit and he lets these creatures out. Verse three, there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And we remember chapter 7 told us about the 144,000 who were saved and have God's seal in their foreheads. So out of the bottomless pit come these scorpions. Now, when people see this, they try to understand, is this literal or is this symbolic? Is this also like a missile? Could these be helicopters, uh, Apache helicopters? You know, if you're, you don't know what these things are and you're John the Apostle in the, the pre- uh, ma, the what, industrial revolution, you don't know what a helicopter is. It may look like a scorpion. You see them shooting missiles. So they don't destroy anything on the earth. They just hurt men. Now, it could also be that these are literal scorpions. We just don't know. But we understand that judgment is coming, and that's what matters. So they're not to hurt those who are saved. And to, hint, to them, it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Now, I've never been stung by a scorpion. I'm glad for that. 
But the pain when these uh, things strike, uh, these, what do they call them? I can't find it now. Lo uh, no, not scorpions of the earth. No, where am I? Uh, they rose out of the pit, smoke gray. I guess well, they're uh, locusts. Okay, locusts upon the earth as uh, they the, the scorpions have power. So these locusts, quote-unquote locusts, we don't know what they are, they sting men, and the sting will hurt a man for five months. It's as though you were stung by a scorpion, and that pain is going to linger all that time. Verse 6, And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. So people would rather die than live through this. In fact, they will pursue death, but it will escape them. So I don't know, failed suicide attempts. I'm not sure exactly how it's all going to play out. Perhaps suicide by police officer. We know that sometimes people who want to die will draw a pistol on the police so that the police will shoot them dead. Uh, we don't know exactly. We're just given what's going to occur, not precisely how it'll occur. Verse 7, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. So read that again and see if that sounds like it could be a helicopter. The shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. So a horse bearing armor, perhaps. Uh, their heads were crowns like gold, uh, propellers. I don't know, faces as it were the faces of men, seeing humans pilot these things. Their hair is the hair of women. I don't know how that comes into play. Their teeth is the teeth of lions. Uh, I'm not sure. They had breastplates, breastplates of iron. The sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots. That makes sense. You see what I'm saying? We don't know. There's a symbolism here, perhaps. It could be literal. We just don't understand it. And you know what? I, I bring this up once in a while when we talk about prophecy. It's okay not to understand it all. And it's okay to not have a dogmatic opinion. In fact, let's uh, let's just lay the, the, the thing right out. You don't have to have a dogmatic opinion about this. It's not going to change any essential doctrine if you do. If you were to say, no, I know these are real locusts. Okay, good for you. What does that help or hinder anyone else's spiritual walk? It doesn't do either, does it? And so it's okay to not fully comprehend. Verse 10, And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there uh, were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, tongue hath his name Apollyon. And so here it is, Satan allowing these locusts, whatever they may be, out of the bottomless pit, whatever that may be, we don't understand that either. Could it be hell is in the center of the earth and there is a chasm that leads from the surface of the earth to hell and it's currently closed and that day Satan will open it and release these things? We don't know for sure. Verse 12, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Remember when we finished chapter 8, the angel said, woe, woe, woe. And we had finished four of the trumpet judgments. Now there's five, six, seven. Those are the final three are great woes. And here's the second one, verse 13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So now this sixth angel is going to say, release four angels that are in the, the Euphrates River. Now, this Euphrates River separates uh, East, Western Europe from uh, Eastern Europe and Asia. And so this river contains these four angels and they're going to be loosed. 
Verse 15, And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Now, we've already lost a third part of the men, uh, maybe a a fourth, I, I, I can't remember. And now another third are going to die. We're talking billions of people are going to die because of these judgments. Now, these angels are prepared. Let's go backwards this time. A year, a month, a day, and an hour. And they're going to kill one third of humanity. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000,000. So let's see, 200,000. Thousand. That's 200 million. Okay. That's a pretty big army. Well, China is east of the Euphrates River, and the river is going to dry up, and this army is going to march across. Could it be coming from China? It's a great possibility. We don't know for sure, but it could be. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And so you see, there's a great deal of firepower here, and John just doesn't know how to describe it. It's largely, in my opinion, modern warfare. But again, I could be wrong. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. So whatever this weaponry is or whatever these creatures might be, they're destroying a third of humanity. So those are the first two woes and the fifth and sixth trumpets. Now when we get to chapter 10, we're going to see another interlude, just like chapter 8. 8 was, I think it was chapter 8, maybe it was 7, it was 7, and uh, we're going to see another break before we get to the next round of judgments, the vile judgments, V-I-A-L, not V-I-L-E. But look at verses 20 and 21, these are very peculiar verses, and the rest of the men which were not killed, what kind of state of mind do you think these people would be in after seeing the six uh, seal judgments brought about, and now six more trumpet judgments brought about. They've endured 12 judgments so far. What do you think their state of mind is going to be? You think they're going to have the fear of God yet? The rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So they didn't repent of their false worship, and they didn't repent of their sin. Nothing is phasing these people. They haven't stopped any wickedness, and yet the judgments will continue to come. All right, that's chapter number nine. I know I probably wasn't a lot of help to you, but I think I might have been if you actually read between the lines. When it comes to prophecy, there's a reason that God only gives us a certain amount of understanding. And we're just to read it, take it for what it is, and know that it's in his hands. In the end, what we take away from all this is God is in control and he is sovereign in the affairs of men. All right, I'll leave you alone with that. Thanks so much for watching. As always, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here and we'll continue tomorrow with chapter number 10. God bless you. Have a great day.